Good morning. Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Earl Street Baptist Church. Thank you so much for being here today. Man, it's great to see a, a, a full house. Um, to our guests, first of all, we are especially happy that you have chosen to worship with us today. And we would appreciate it if you would fill out one of our guest cards. They're located in the little pew pocket there in front of you. And if you would complete one of those cards and put it in the offering plate when they are passed later in the service, we would appreciate that. The information on those cards enables us to get to know you a little bit better and enables us to extend a more personal welcome to you. So thank you for that and for being here. And as you may have gathered, today is an extra special day uh, at Earl Street. Today we celebrate and thank God for our preschoolers and children especially. Um, God has blessed our church family with such a sweet and smart and talented group of preschoolers and children and today is their day. Uh, also, we are happy to have with us this morning our new minister to preschoolers and children, Bethany Hovis, who will be starting in June, but is with us today to make this special day even more special. And she will be speaking later in the service, and uh, we hope that all of you will get the opportunity to say hello to her and meet her after the service. Uh, by way of announcement, the scholarship committee is pleased to announce that scholarship applications are available for members of the graduating class of 2018. Details about the scholarship are in the newsletter, so please consult that, and you can contact me to request an application and also to get more information if you would like. And then finally, Graduate Sunday is coming up in a couple of weeks, May 20th, and on that day, we will be recognizing our high school and college graduates in the class of 2018. If you are graduating or if you know somebody who is, please make sure that you've contacted Lucy uh, or me or Spencer uh, by the end of this week, if you could, so that we could get information that we can share with everyone and recognize you or that person that's special to you. Uh, and now, Please take this opportunity to silence your mobile devices and still your hearts as we prepare to meet God together in worship. Thank you.
We know that Jesus loved children and never turned them away when they sought his presence. We ask for God's blessings on our preschoolers and children, both in their homes and in this church. Grant that we and they together may have a constant sense of your divine presence in our lives. Amen. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, we thank you for the blessing of children, signs that your kingdom is growing leaps and bounds among us. With unconditional love, may we gather them into your church. Let us tell them your story again and again until it sinks deep into their souls. Remind us that life is short. May we use every opportunity to nurture all that makes them precious gifts, sons and daughters made in the image of God. Above all, as we grow alongside our children, may our faithfulness and dependence on you show them that they can trust your tender love, both now and forever. Amen. Good morning. 
Um, I'm Shana Johnson. I'm the director for Earl Street Preschool Education. I have been the director since last February, and I've been so fortunate to be a part of a program whose mission has always been to provide a loving and enriching learning environment for all children. Over the years, the church has had a vision to minister to families in our community through our weekday program. Between our fall and summer classes, we currently serve over 50 families. It has been such a blessing to get to know each and every one of them. During the 915 service, we recognize the families who have been a part of Earl Street Preschool Education, past and present, and we are so thankful for their continued support of our program. I would also like to thank the church for your constant love and support you have shown through your prayers, attendance at our fundraising events, and volunteering your time when we needed help downstairs. I truly believe that with God's guidance and our faith in him, our school can continue to be a ministry to this community. Will you pray with me? Father, what a great day it is to be able to worship you here. You've blessed us with so much, and we have so much to be thankful for. Especially today, Father, we thank you for these amazing children. We thank you for our staff and the teachers and volunteers that spend so much time teaching them about you, Father. And as we receive these offerings today, Father, we pray that we can continue to support the many ministries and missions here at Earl Street that they may further your kingdom. In Christ's name I pray, amen.
In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify our Father in heaven.
We need dark made light in the world. Hope shown bright in the world. We need wrong made bright in the world. Shine a little light on the world. Shine a little light on the world. I'll shine it from the mountain top. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be here today. It is always such a blessing to be at Earl Street, but between yesterday's prayer and breakfast and the beautiful music that we've heard at both services this morning, I am just in awe that God has allowed me to come back here, and I feel so fortunate to be part of this church family. You have all made me feel so welcome, and I just cannot wait to come home in June. So thank you for such a wonderful homecoming. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. Please follow along with me as I read. Two are better than one, because they have a good return for their labor. If one falls down, his friend can help him up. But pity the man who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. This is the word of the Lord. We've all been there. You utter a phrase you never thought you'd say. You make a certain facial expression without realizing it. You move your hands in a certain way when you tell a story. You hear a tone in your voice you've never heard before, and it hits you. What you said would never happen has happened. You have become your parents. 
Of course you have. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far. For me, that's not such a bad thing. If you told me I was like my mom, Teresa, or my dad, Richard, in some way, I would take that as a compliment. Even when my sister came to visit a few weekends ago and told me, that is the most Teresa Creed thing you have ever said, when I asked her to fold a washcloth a certain way, I wasn't offended. My parents are pretty amazing people who have set great examples for me. Everything from the correct way to fold laundry to how to interact with people. I am who I am in large part because of them. Of course I am. The apple doesn't fall far. In 12 years of teaching over 200 students and working with at least 300 parents, grandparents, and guardians, I have learned a lot. But through countless conferences, phone calls, and emails, there is one thing I am sure of. For better or for worse, the apple never falls far from the tree. My students are proof of that. I am proof of that. And I'm sure many of you are too. But here's the thing. The tree that each one of us apples comes from is made up of more than just a parent branch. While we give the adults who raised us a lot of credit, they're not the only ones who make a difference in our lives. Siblings, other family members, teachers, Sunday school teachers, coaches, friends, every significant relationship we have in our lives makes, us, makes the tree we come from fuller and healthier, making us perhaps a bit more complicated, but also more complete ripe, if you will. I've always appreciated art, but I understand it more because of my sister Caitlin, who has an art history degree. I know how to do a pirouette because Miss Marla, my dance teacher for 15 years, taught me how. I can sorta kinda still speak some French after all these years because Monsieur Wilson was an excellent high school French teacher. I find comfort in the words of Psalm 23 because Miss Virginia encouraged me to memorize those precious verses as a child. I can be comfortable with who I am because of childhood friends who always accepted me for me. Although there is no doubt the parent branch I come from has had a huge impact on me, there are hundreds of other branches that have nurtured and created the person I am today, including many people in this room, those I have known for years and those I have just met recently. The book of Ecclesiastes tells us that two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. It goes on to say that though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. What God is telling us is that not only is it inevitable that our children are influenced by more than just parents, it's important. A healthy apple doesn't come from a tree with one little branch. It comes from a tree full of leafy branches that have grown over time with love and care and protects the apple until it is ready to be picked. And children are not just replicas of their parents. Children grow and change as a result of every relationship they have. This passage reminds us that we all have a responsibility to create a safe and loving environment for our children. Whether you're a parent, a teacher, or just a friendly face in the sanctuary, it is important that we all encourage our children to become the best they can be because two are better than one. This passage of scripture also reminds us that while we can work together to teach and encourage our children, we also need to lift one another up. Verse 10 says that if someone falls down, one can help the other up. Some days it's hard to put on a happy face, even when we know little eyes are watching. It's not always easy to be the strong, supportive branch our apples need. But that's why there's strength in numbers. When we have a bad day, we know there are many other family members, friends, and teachers guiding our children, while at the same time giving us the love and support we need to press on. Again, two are better than one. Ecclesiastes goes on to say that a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. If we think of one of those strands as our parents and another as all of the other significant influences in our lives, we may be left asking, where does the third strand come in? Isn't my tree full and healthy with my family, my friends, and my teachers? Isn't my cord strong because of all the people that love me and teach me? Not quite. That third strand is God, the one who watches over our children even when we have a hard time, even when we make mistakes. No human is perfect, but God is. No human sets the perfect example all the time, but God does. I find it extremely comforting that even on my hardest days, God's unconditional love is there, reminding me that it's going to be okay. And because I was taught that from an early age, he too is part of my tree. My parents, my family, my friends, my teachers, they're all a part of me but God is the third strand that keeps me from breaking. 
He is the branch that makes me whole, that makes me strong. As far as I'm concerned, we can all take comfort in the fact that even when we're not setting the perfect example for our children, God still is. When our children know about God's love, they have everything they need. If you're a parent, I hope you find peace in that message. You're not alone, stranded on a parenting island, solely responsible for the person your child becomes. There are many other people looking out for you and your children, and God is continually there, love and protecting your family. Even on stormy days when your particular branch is swaying in the wind and is close to snapping in two, your apples will be okay as they hold on tightly to the many other branches in their tree. If you're not a parent, or perhaps your children are grown, I hope this message brings you joy. Joy in knowing you are or can be a big, strong branch for our young apples to grow on. If you feel that way, I hope you will prayerfully consider joining our team in the children's department. You can hold babies, play with toddlers, teach preschoolers or school-aged children. You can work with children on Wednesday night, volunteer at Vacation Bible School, or work at any of our other special events throughout the year. Now, for some non-parents, this mes message may bring you the opposite of joy, fear, panic even, at the thought of being an influence in the life of a child. You may not even consider yourself an apple person. But know this, our children are watching you too. And you don't have to teach Sunday school to be a branch in a child's tree. Be kind to one another, support children's programs, encourage teachers. As Jesus tells us in the book of Matthew, and we were reminded just a few minutes ago, let your light shine before others. Just doing our best to set a good example and be that light impacts our children more than we realize, even if we never set foot inside a classroom. Our children are watching us all, and they need us all. Our children, our little apples, are so fortunate to be in a place that knows their strength in numbers. Two are better than one, and when we take care of each other and trust that God is in control, our children are falling from a tree so healthy and so full that they will go out in the world ready to take on anything. And no matter their age, from now until forever, they will be able to rest in the shade of a tree grown with love and encouragement. Between our parents, our committed teachers, and our loving congregation, there is no doubt in my mind that Earl Street Baptist Church is the perfect tree for our little apples. And as they say, the apple doesn't fall far. Amen. If you have had ears to hear, you have heard the voice of God today through the singing of the hymns and the reading of the scripture, through the beautiful music that we've heard from our children, through Bethany's message. We have heard the voice of God today, and we give you an opportunity now to respond to what you've heard, to profess your faith in Jesus, trust him to be your savior, follow him as your Lord to renew your commitment to Christ, to join our church, or to respond in any other way. As God's Spirit leads you, I will be here at the front to receive you as we stand to sing.
Would you be seated, please? I don't know how anybody could have been here today without feeling bright and optimistic about the future of our church. Uh, we have all been blessed this morning in so many ways. Our children have led us so beautifully. As I said in the first service, you know, in this service, we see the finished product. You know, they're standing there with arms to their sides. They have memorized their music, and they look like little angelic robots, you know. <laughs> But can you imagine what it took to get them to this point? <laughs> and how many weeks our workers had to work with them and, and uh, so lovingly teach them. The families and parents who have brought them week after week on Wednesday nights. This is just such, such a beautiful celebration. And the 915 service with our preschoolers was just as beautiful. And so... I am so optimistic about the future of our church. Um, and today I couldn't help but think as I looked at Paula, um, Paula, I can't tell you how many times in the last several months Sylvia and I have said to each other, I don't know how Paula did that for 13 years. <laughs> we don't, we don't know how you did it for 13 years. And. Uh, And then we have said, precious Kay, where is Kay? Is Kay here somewhere? I wouldn't blame her if she has left. Uh, <laughs> she's probably downstairs, I'm sure, with the children. But Kay has been our interim minister, preschoolers and children, until, you know, until we got somebody. And a year later, she is still our minister to preschoolers and children. And I'm sure that when Kay gets to heaven, she is going to be in the lap of Jesus. <laughs> And so we owe her a, a great debt of gratitude. But then when I think about the future, I'm just so very thankful that God led Bethany to us. What a beautiful message you brought to us today and a beautiful vision of the apples on the tree and us being branches, a, a, a timely reminder to us all today. So I'm just so thankful about the past and the present and the future of our church. And speaking of our future, God continues to add people to our family of faith. So I'm going to ask Charles and Tish to stand here. This is Charles and Tish Alford who come today to join our church as Christians from another denomination. They've been worshiping here for quite some time and uh, have sensed that this is where God is leading them to invest their lives. If you will do all that you can to do for them what you've done for so many people in the in the years gone by and welcome them into our family of faith and support them and get to know them and help them find their place of service here would you please express your welcome by saying welcome home welcome, welcome home. home we're so delighted that you're here do y'all have time for me to tell you a quick story okay finest said no um <laughs> I, I'm not sure I should tell this story, but you've, you've, some of you have heard me tell this story as a sermon illustration. But Dr. Alford was a longtime professor at Furman, and he taught, among other things, statistics, which had the reputation at Furman of being the hardest course at Furman. And, um, or maybe he just had the reputation of being the hardest professor at Furman. Or both. Well, I had the mis I mean, the fortune of <laughs> taking statistics under Dr. Alford, and he came in on the first day of class, and he said to us, now, you are going to have to study three hours a day for this one course. And we had other courses, you know, but he didn't seem to care too much about that. <laughs> and he said... You, and some of you are going to think that you can get by on less than three hours. And you're going to come in and you're going to take the first test and you're going to make a 10 on it. And then you're going to have to go drop the course. Well, I was one who thought I might be able to get by on less than three hours. I came in and took the first test and I showed him. I made an eight on the first <laughs> test. 
and went as straight as I could to the drop ad counter, <laughs> dropped the course, ended up taking it by itself in summer school and did okay, I learned my lesson. <laughs> but he means business. And now, and now to welcome him into all these years later, to welcome him <laughs> into our church, uh, I see he still puts the fear of God in me, <laughs> but, but, but I'm starting to be less intimidated because he's been so gracious, and we are so thankful to welcome y'all. Was that okay to tell that story? <laughs> it's too late now. So please come by after the service and welcome them into our fellowship and do all that you can in the days to come to help them find their place here at Earl Street. Would you please stand for the benediction? God, we are amazed at the ways that you work among us. When we look back so many years, the people who helped to shape and form our lives, like Dr. Alford many, many years ago, and how the, the circle comes all the way around, and, and here they are joining our church today. We look back and thank you for Paula, we look around and thank you for Kay. We look ahead and thank you for Bethany. We thank you for the rich heritage and history of our church and for all the people for so long who worked so tirelessly and faithfully. And then we look ahead into the future that you have in store for us. And we are so thankful for the opportunities that you have given us. We pray, Lord, that we will be faithful stewards of all of your blessings. Thank you so much for the children who have led us so beautifully today, for their families and for their leaders. Please, Lord, keep us close. Keep us close to those precious children. Keep us all close to each other. And keep us all close to you. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you and abide with you and keep you this day and forevermore. Mm -hmm.